Hey VAT, back with more shapes. Can you believe it? This right here is called the ellipse tool. It's inside of the rectangle tool. If you click and hold the mouse, grab the ellipse tool. We're going to start off with circles again. Can you believe it? We're going to hold shift while we stretch out an ellipse. Keeps it a perfect circle. We're going to make copies of said circle by holding down alt, clicking and dragging to produce a copy. We can produce another copy. If you want to do this a different way, you can select the circle, hit edit, copy, edit, paste. Okay, so now we've got a bunch of circles. I want to show you a different way to alter shapes um, in order to create new ones. Starting with a simple shape like a circle or square or uh, a star even, um, you can you can start with that simple shape. It's as easy as clicking and dragging to produce the shape, but then you can alter the shapes or customize them using this new tool that we uh, will talk about now called the direct selection tool. So, so far we've used the selection tool, which is great because it selects the entire shape. It then can move the entire shape, it can rotate the entire shape, and it can also shrink or stretch the entire shape. But this white arrow is called the direct selection tool because it directly selects individual anchor points and paths. So the white arrow tool can click on individual paths, individual anchor points. So the top of the circle has an anchor point that you can click on. Once you do that, you can move that individual anchor point up or down. You can click on drag it up, down, move it all around. Or you can just hit up, 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 on the keyboard, and that produces an egg. Sweet. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? I can't believe it. All right, so we've got the egg shape up. All right, let's make this circle an egg as well by selecting its top anchor point with the direct selection tool, the white arrow tool. Hitting up, you make an egg. But now let's talk about these things that are hanging off the side of that anchor point. These are called bezier handlebars. Uh, they look like, it looks like our shape has an antenna, uh, like a bug or something. But what we can do with those is we can select them with the white direct selection tool and we can move them and that adjusts the curve of our actual shape. So grabbing one side and moving it down makes the other side go up, sort of like a teeter-totter. However, if before you click on the anchor, uh, the uh, handlebar, you hold down Alt on your keyboard, then you click on it and you move it, it breaks the handlebar in half, allowing us to produce acute angles or <laughs> oh, look how cute it is so this in this instance we took an egg and we broke that handlebar and made the handlebar kind of look like an upside down V which produces this um, it's like a drop of water or something so that's kind of cool let's move on to our third and final circle we're gonna turn this one into a heart this is the most challenging but it's the same exact thing that we just did uh, using the direct selection tool, we select the top anchor point. I'm going to move that down a smidge by hitting down, down, down on my cursors, on my arrow keys on the keyboard, and then I'm going to hold Alt and break this handlebar to produce a V-like handlebar. And the bottom needs to be broken too, so if I hold Alt, click on this side, and... Okay, and now I'm letting go of Alt. So if you keep holding it, it'll start doing weird stuff. It'll make copies. So once the handlebar is broken, let go. And I'm just going to move these anchor points to make a heart. And you can adjust those handlebars to your liking until your heart looks like a heart. I love vectoring. I'll see you guys in class.